today it's your boy Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs back with another video and so for this video I'm going to be talking about the genetics in hog nose snakes so going over dominant and complete dominance recessive genes and things like that as well as what are some of the probabilities and percentages that you'll get with the babies when you breed a pair of hog nose snakes and when I was at the Daytona show um, I remember overhearing uh, this customer coming up to one of the breeders um, at one of the booths and he was kind of asking him about the genetics and the breeder was trying to explain it to him and the customer was just like looking at him like a deer in headlights he had no idea so I, this video I've been working on it for a couple weeks and I was like you know what I really got to make this video because this is very confusing to a lot of people um, everybody was there at one point where they didn't really understand the genetics and there's a lot it's been a lot of videos being made about this so I wanted to do my little um rendition of it and kind of break it down using pictures because that's what i like to do for those visual learners so um enjoy the video and hopefully it's helpful to y'all all right let's get into some hog nose genetics one-on-one -on -one. so the outline we're going to start off with the dominant morphs and then we're going to transition to incomplete dominant then recessive and then mixed in we're going to go over some probabilities once you pair some of the the different parents. So let's get started with the dominant morph. So dominant morph shows a specific trait even if only one of the parents passed the gene to its offspring. So some examples would be the wild type or the normal hog nose, lemon ghost, RBE, pastel, mocha, shadow, granite, green hypo, jaguar, tiger, and some of these examples are pattern morphs and some of them are color morphs. So like I say earlier, with the dominant gene, you only need one copy from one of the parents to visually express that morph. And some animals actually have two copies of a dominant gene. And so if it has two copies, it just gives a more of a, um, it gives a greater chance that that trait will be passed on to the offspring. So here's a few pictures of some of the the dominant traits. Um, this is not all of them. So I got like a picture of the normal lemon ghost which the lemon ghost becomes more yellow as it ages the tiger which is a pattern morph as you can see it kind of has like tiger stripes um, the rbe pastel it kind of highlights the pattern it kind of brings more contrast between a background and a pattern you have the green hypo which is like a green face hog nose and then you have like the mocha which is more of like a brownish um, animal and the pattern is usually a lot larger and more jumbled up so now we're going to go into like a pundit square. So kind of showing you what you can get when you breed two of the parents. So for this example of the dominant trait, we're just going to use the wild type of the normal gene. And so let's say parent number one is just a normal. So it has two copies of the normal gene. Um, and then parent two has two copies of the normal gene. So the first box is going to be, um, and each parent is going to pass on one gene. So the first box, each parent passes on a normal gene. The second one, the same thing. The third box, the same thing. And the fourth box. So when you breed a normal to a normal, all the babies are going to come out normal, 100%. All right. And so that's basically the, the dominant genes. I'm not going to get too much more into that. We're going to go next into the incomplete dominant uh, more so it's kind of similar to the dominant genes, but it's not at the same time So incomplete dominant is when a hog nose receives Two copies of an incomplete dominant gene the combination creates a new phenotype or the phenotype means what it visually looks like um, Or a set of observable traits. So if it if it so Neither of these genes are fully dominant, so the result is new looking. So this is when it receives two copies. So if it receives one copy of an incomplete dominant trait, you're going to visually see that trait just like a dominant. But if you have two copies of it, you're going to get a whole new looking animal because neither one of the genes are completely dominant. So they basically kind of combine together, forming a whole new different looking animal. And so the two examples of incomplete dominant genes in a hog nose snakes that we know of so far are the arctic gene and the anaconda gene and incomplete dominant is also different than codominant i'm not going to go into codominant um, in this video there's actually no 
examples of a cold dominant morph in hognose. They're actually incomplete dominant because when you combine them, you get a totally different looking animal. And so let's look at some examples. Um, the first one is the anaconda gene. So on the left hand side, you see what the animal looks like when it has one copy of the anaconda. And the anaconda gene is a pattern reduction. So with one copy, the pattern is reduced. But if the animal has two copies of the anaconda gene, you get what's called a super form. So you get a total pattern reduction. All right, the next one is going to be the Arctic gene. And so when you have one copy of the Arctic gene, the Arctic gives a few characteristics. So the background is going to be a lot lighter. The animal is usually a grayish color. And then the actual pattern is usually highlighted because usually the outline has melanin or a black color around it, especially around like the face of the animal and the neck flags. Um, and so that really makes the, the pattern pop out from uh, the background. And so whenever you have two copies of the Arctic gene, you get the super form, which is a super Arctic, and you see even more contrast between the pattern and the background. And so the pattern is even lighter than before, and then you have more melatonin, more of that dark pigment in the pattern. And also the eyes, the iris and the pupil are gonna be jet black, and you usually see a reduced pattern on the head. So as you can see, one copy, you'll have an Arctic, and then when you have two copies, you get a totally different looking animal. All right, so this right here, we're going to just kind of um, use this as an example before we get into the pundit squares for the incomplete dominant. So whenever you have a dominant gene combined with a dominant gene, so the wild type combined with a wild type, you're going to get a wild type looking animal. So with the incomplete dominant, if you have a dominant in an incomplete dominant, we're going to use the, the conda more, for example, you're going to get an animal that is a conda, a pattern reduction. So like I say, with incomplete dominant, you only need one copy of that gene to visually see what that incomplete dominant animal looks like. So what happens when you have two copies of the anaconda gene? Like I said before, you're going to get the super form, which is a complete pattern reduction. All right, so with that being said, kind of look at this slide right here because this is going to be very important when we start using the Punnett squares. So the first combination we're going to look at is if you have the first parent, you have one parent is a normal, so he has two copies of the normal uh, morph. And then the second pattern, we're going to have an anaconda. So like I say, with the anaconda, it's just one copy of the anaconda. So you got the normal wild type and then the anaconda. So the first combination is going to be two normals. So this right here is going to be a normal looking animal. The second combination is going to be an anaconda. The third combination is going to be a normal looking animal. And the fourth combination is going to be a conda. So whenever you breed a, a conda to a normal, 50% of the babies are going to be normal, have a normal pattern. 50% of the babies are going to have a reduced pattern of the condom. All right. So next combination, when we have one parent is has the anaconda gene, and the second parent has the anaconda gene. So the first pairing, we're going to have a normal pattern snake, just a normal. Second combination, we're going to have a conda. Third combination, we're going to have a conda. In the fourth combination, we're going to have a superconda because it has two copies of the anaconda gene. So 25% are going to be normal pattern, 50% are going to be the reduced conda, and then 25% are going to be totally patternless. So if you read an anaconda to an anaconda, 25% are going to be supercondas. All right, so the last combination I'm going to show y'all is what happens when you breed a superconda to a superconda. And so when you do that, first combination is going to be a superconda, second one's going to be a superconda, third, and the fourth. So if you breed a superconda to a superconda, all the babies will be superconda. And so the other uh, combination I didn't include in this slide is what if you have a superconda with a conda, and that combination, half of the babies are going to be superconda, half of the babies are going to be conda. All right, so that's basically it for the incomplete dominant genes. 
And you can also um, do this same thing with the Arctic gene. It's going to work exactly the same. But instead of the superconda, you're going to get a super Arctic. All right. So now let's get into the recessive more. So recessive. Um, shows its characteristics when both parents pass the gene to its offspring. So in order for you to visually see what that recessive gene looks like, that animal has to have two copies of it. So here's some examples of some recessive morphs. You got albino, exanthic, caramel, lavender, leucistic, sable, so on and so forth. And this is just a few. Pretty sure I'm missing some right here. Here's some visual pictures of a, of a couple. Uh, or a few um, recessive, so I got lavender, sable, albino, leucistic, exanthic, toffee belly. And before we get to the pundit squares, we're gonna do this same chart that we did for the incomplete dominant. So a dominant plus dominant, you're gonna get a normal looking snake. A dominant plus a recessive, and for example, we're gonna be using the leucistic gene for this PowerPoint. So a dominant versus leucistic, Plus leucistic is going to give you a normal looking animal because the recessive in these two copies. And so recessive and recessive is going to give you a visual. So the middle one, the dominant and recessive, this is the term that, that you see het or heterozygous, meaning that it only has one copy. So whenever you see an animal that is het for leucistic or albino, that means that you visually cannot see it, but it has it carries that one copy of that recessive gene. All right. So let's use the Punnett squares and let's look at some of the probabilities. So let's say the parent, the first parent is a normal, but is a carrier of the leucistic. So a normal 100 percent het leucistic. And then parent two is a visual leucistic. So an animal that has two copies of the leucistic genes. Let's see what the statistics are what the probabilities of the offspring. So the first probability is going to be just like the first parent, a normal 100% het leucistic. The second combination is going to be the same thing. It's going to be a carrier, the leucistic gene. The third is going to be a visual leucistic. And the fourth is going to be a visual leucistic. So with this combination right here, 50% are going to be normal looking but carry the leucistic gene. And the other 50% are going to be visuals that carry two copies of the gene. So in my opinion, this is my favorite combination right here. If I wanted to get into um, a recessive gene, me personally, I would get a visual recessive and then I would get another animal that carries it. And the, the thing about that is all of your animals are going to carry that recessive gene. So anyone that looks normal, you know, for 100% fact that it's going to be a carrier and that's just going to help you in terms of selling your animal you're going to know exactly what you have genetic wise in your animal so now we're going to get into something that's a little more confusing and here's an example i found on morph market um, we're using this picture is just albino so albino is another recessive gene so what happens when you see an animal listed as 66 percent het albino or 66 per het percent het leucistic or toffee or whatever. Where where are they getting this statistics from? So this is not just in hognose snakes. You'll also see this in ball pythons, and carpet pythons, any other type of reptile, you may see this statistic. So this, this is the pairing um, that results in this animal right here. So, but we're gonna use the leucistic for this example. So the first parent will be a normal 100% um, het leucistic, so just a carrier. And the second parent is going to be the same, a normal looking animal, but carries the leucistic. So when you combine these two and you breed them, the first pairing is going to be a normal that doesn't carry the leucistic. Second pairing is going to be, or the second possibility is going to be um, a carrier. Third possibility is going to be a carrier. And the fourth possibility is going to be a visual. So if you look at this, 25% are going to be normals without carrying. 50% are going to be carriers or 100% het. And then the last 25 are going to be the visual. So when you look at this right here, you don't really see 66%. So when you, when you have this right here, this pairing right here, the only offspring that you know for 100% fat 
have the leucistic trait or any other type of recessive trait that you're breeding are the visuals because you can visually see it. All the other animals look normal and you can't tell. So because we know the visual has that leucistic trait, we're going to get rid of it. And so what we're left with is three different possibilities. And so two out of the three carry that trait. So two divided by three is 66 percent. So this is where you get the 66 percent from. So if you ever see an animal that's advertised as that or listed as that, that lets you know that this animal came from a head to head breeding. And when you take away the visual recessives, the visual animals, what you're left with are all normal looking animals that are going to be um, 66 percent pet or carriers of that gene. All right. And so the last one I'm going to go over is if you see an animal that is listed as 50 percent possible head. And so I got this animal off of Morph Market. It was listed as 50 percent possible head leucistic. What does that mean? What are the parent the pairings? So this is a pairing when you have parent number one that is a normal that doesn't carry that recessive gene at all. And you pair that with an animal that is a carrier of that gene. So the first combination is going to be an animal that doesn't carry it. The second one is going to be a carrier. The third possibility is going to be a non-carrier. And the fourth one is going to be a carrier. So 50% of the animals are not going to carry that recessive gene at all. And 50% of the animals will carry it. The only thing about it is all these animals look the same. None of these animals are visual. So you have a 50% chance that you're going to have an animal that carries that recessive gene. So that's where they get 50% possible head, leucistic or albino, whatever. It's a breeding of a head, a 100% head bred with an animal that didn't have that recessive gene at all. So basically, that's it. That's that's the hog nose genetics. Um, once you know all that, man, it's, you know what I'm saying, it's pretty easy. And so if you have any other questions or this doesn't make any sense, or you want to look at the statistics of animals that have multiple recessive genes, I think the easiest thing to do is go on Morph Market's calculator. And that way you can type in the exact genetics for both of the parents and they'll give you more of a percentage breakdown and the possibilities of your animals. But hopefully this video made sense. Um, leave your comments down at the bottom. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Whatever, man. And I'll see y'all for the next one. Peace out.